What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this tutorial, we're going over audio compression in DaVinci Resolve 17. It's imperative that your videos are accompanied by good audio. Trust me, I've heard all about it in the comment section of some of my videos. In this video, we'll be going over everything you need to know to get that full, thick sound from proper audio compression. Let's get into it. So once you have compression in your bag of tricks, your videos are literally never the same. It makes such a big difference in the quality of a video when the audio is not hard to listen to. Uh, you know, just like you wanna make the visuals easy to look at, you wanna make the audio easy to listen to. Uh, so the user, the, the viewer is not experiencing any audio fatigue or lacking anything. Like, I'm not really hearing what's going on. I've mentioned the, that dark scene in Game of Thrones that everybody went wild about, the big, the big war. It was like, oh, it was way too dark. Well, what if people make things too quiet too? That also sucks. Or if you can't hear certain syllables or if the emotion's not coming across because the audio levels aren't put together. Um, that kind of thing can really take away from an episodic series or a film for sure. Um, and even YouTube videos, the, the better you can portray yourself, the more and easier it's gonna be for people that wanna watch you. So if we dive into this clip I have here, we'll just take a listen, it's just an interview clip. Uh, and let me go ahead and play this back. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, little bit art deco. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am as a person. So one thing I noticed is just the biggest thing to notice there is the fluctuation of volumes. And you can see it clear as day on the, uh, the audio waveform here. In the very beginning, she's way louder. I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Than she is at the very end. I am as a person. She almost sounds like she's losing confidence at the end. She doesn't look like she's losing really, confidence. Really reflects who I am as a person. But she sounds like she's losing confidence, which you never really want that to be the case unless that's the emotion you're trying to portray. Of my personality, anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am as a person. Yeah, vocally, it sounds like she's kind of pulling back. And with compression, we can make sure that the whole thing kind of has a more powerful, like she's pushing uh, and, and really speaking with a little bit more authority just by squeezing the highs down a little bit and pulling those lows up. Um, it's, it's similar to color grading in a sense where you balance things out, uh, but a lot different, of course. And I'll even bring in a compressed version of that same clip so you can see the visual difference. So this is that same audio, but compressed. And you can see that it's much fuller. It's much thicker. And these peaks that we have that are poppy and ah, ah they, they've all kind of been tamed. And that's what compression does. It kind of tames an audio track and fills it out at the same time. Now, of course, there's EQing and there's plugins you can use for all kinds of techniques, but compression is just one of the things that is a must have, must do uh, thing in, in almost every situation. So I'm gonna delete that. Uh, we'll use this clip and then come over to Fairlight. Now, a few tips just to get started with compression. Uh, in Fairlight, the first thing you're gonna see in the mixer is your order. And the order I like to use is EQ first and then effects and then dynamics. The reason I do that is because I think before you compress anything, you should have the best quality audio. Uh, because if you have a, let's say you have some room noise in the background and that room noise, if you compress, then you're gonna bring the room noise up with those low syllables. And so it's gonna squeeze the top end down, but it's also gonna bring the noise floor up. So you wanna take care of that noise floor first. So I have another video on EQing out um, you know, bad sounds in the background. And you can watch that video if you wanna deep dive on how I do that. But I would do that first. I would, I would EQ first, and then if I use any noise reduction in effects, like any plugins, I have one that I, I use all the time, I'll show you here. Um, I would use that before dynamics. That way, when you go into the compression, you just got a clean vocal signal. That is the most important thing. When you go into dynamics and compression, you really want that clean vocal signal uh, because this will raise the lows and bring down the highs. So um, there's some other techniques I'm gonna show too that aren't just about balancing the audio, but that's kind of the main gist of uh, working with compression, especially in this sense, in, in a video narrative sense. Another thing with the order is if you are intending on using reverb as an effect, you don't want to, to do this order. You'll want to use the effects. Uh, you want it to be EQ, dynamics, then effects, 
uh, because you'll want that reverb to be the last thing that goes out after the compression or any kind of delay you want to come out after the compression. You don't want to add noise to the signal um, before you do compression. Unless it's like a distortion, you can maybe do that. But even a distortion, I would probably just add it after. Unless you're really trying to make a weird effect, like some kind of megaphone effect or like a CB a radio effect or, or walkie-talkie effect, then maybe you could mess around with some things and break the rules just to make a really cool, crunchy sound. But overall, if I were to add sounds to, the, to my audio, I would do it uh, after the compression. And if I'm trying to make a clean audio signal, I'll do that before the compression. So I hope you guys are sticking with me here. Uh, that's kind of a big one that you'll run into that situation a lot, thinking about like, okay, what's the right way to do this audio depending on what I need for this in particular project. So here, what I've done already is I've done a little bit of noise reduction. I've done that after my EQing. I've EQed out some bad frequencies. Uh, and then I've done my noise reduction, which my favorite noise reduction probably is the NS1. And it's just simple. If I turn this off and play this uh, back. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. And then I turn it on. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. All that hiss and, and that little bit of room noise I had. Mid-century modern, little bit art deco. I Gone. love color. Color is like- Love this plugin. Not even what this video is about. Pro tip, you guys click the like button if you guys like pro tips. Anyway, um, so moving forward, EQing, very important. I'll just give you a quick before and after what the EQing was like. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I a little bit more room noise. Love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction. And that took out a little bit of body, but it took out a lot of the room echo that you're getting from her voice, which gave the NS1 a lot uh, more to work with. Love it. So going into the dynamics and compression. So I'm just going to go over the controls uh, kind of one by one so you guys fully understand what you're looking at. Because the more you understand these controls, the faster you'll get at them and the better you'll get in various different situations. And you'll, you'll love yourself in the future because you'll be the audio guy. And so if I turn this compressor on and uh, play this back, the first thing we're going to look at is the threshold. Uh, the threshold is where the compressor will start doing its effect. Um, so that's simply, uh, one thing you can do is if you're looking at the audio. Um, I would say I'm very- In the input section here. Mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, little bit art deco. I love color. Color is like my- Okay, so it looks like we're ranging between like minus 21 and roughly minus 10. That's kind of our dynamic range. And she's kind of uh, and coming down. Uh, and sometimes she's, you know, kind of coming up and coming down. I would down. say I'm very... You know, there's, there are all those high um, decibel words in the beginning. But for the most part, she's kind of sticking between modern. that minus 10. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deck. Minus 21. So use that input to kind of dictate where you want the threshold. Overall, it's going to be the sound you hear that's going to dictate the threshold. So don't copy... Um, you know, just copying somebody's numbers is not going to work. I mean, different audio from different mics in different rooms, it, it all, there's too many variables. Um, what you can do is use somebody else's numbers, like some of my numbers today even, to show you a good starting point. But, you know, you're going to have to play around with these things and kind of feel it out. The more you do it, the faster you'll get. And uh, before you know it, it'll just be like breathing. I swear. Audio is easy, especially for video. A little complicated at first, but once you get it down, it's a, it's a breeze. So coming back to this, we're seeing that, that that's kind of where our audio is coming up and down. And what we want to do is we kind of want to squish this down, uh, these peaks down to where um, the main vocal is, uh, like the main level is. And we'll say, let's say this main level, if we listen back around here. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold. Okay, I would say more than not, it's around this minus 17 to minus 20 range. It's a great depiction. Of uh, and the peaks are when it goes up to 10. So I would set the threshold at something like maybe minus 19, minus 20. Uh, maybe I'll just go all the way to 20. Let's go 20.5. And that's not going to do much yet. The ratio, uh, as we move on to the ratio, the ratio is like the strength of the effect. So right now it's set to 2 to 1. Uh, 2 to 1 would be if the audio goes two decibels above the threshold, above minus 20.5 dB, then it'll take it down to one. 
So instead of going up two, it'll only go above that threshold by one decibel. And that's for every two decibels it goes above. Now, uh, if we go up to something like eight or nine, 9.1, 9 to 1, that means it'll have to go 9. If it went 9 decibels over the threshold, it would shove it down to only 1 decibel. It's very important that you understand what it does, but it's it's much simpler than you think. For me, um, when you're up in this 9, 10 plus region, you're pretty much limiting. You're pretty much just cutting anything that hits the threshold, you're pretty much just cutting off. So uh, I like to leave this in between, I would see, say maybe 1.8 to 2, uh, 2 to 1 all the way to maybe four. There's not many situations where I go to four or above unless I'm trying to specifically create a certain effect. Like uh, like I'm, you know, like I said before with like a talk back radio or a walkie talkie or CB. Um, and something like that, I might compress the crap out of it. But in, in normal, when I'm just trying to get a nice clean signal, uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. So okay. I'm gonna pull this back around maybe to four. I mean, let's go all the way to, let's say, 2.8.1. And now we should hear some smoothness here. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I love color. And, and look at one thing over here. Now you're gonna see our original input with this uh, level here, but over here in the audio one, you'll see are affected levels and it pretty much doesn't ever get to 10 again minus modern, 10 a little bit art deco i love color color is like my thing i feel like it's a great depiction of my personality anything bright and bold really really reflects who i am as a person that's nice now see here where she gets kind of quiet on the end that really stayed at the probably minus 13 um, db and down range so this has been squashed nice and we can't even really tell. It doesn't sound dr drastic. I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like- That sounds really smooth to me. So at the end here, I'm gonna just check at where these dBs are to see where the level is here. Really, really reflects who I am as a person. Okay, so it's in that same range on the input. Really, really reflects. Okay, so now that we've kind of squashed the top down, we've actually brought down, as you guys saw, we're pretty much sitting all the way down here in the level. So we wanna bring this up. I wouldn't do this with the actual volume of the track. Uh, that's where this makeup comes into the mix, where you can turn this makeup and use this to make up for what you've squashed down. This will raise the entire track up. Another reason why you would wanna eliminate any background noise before this step, because in this process right here that we're doing now is when those background noises would also be lifted. If you hadn't used noise reduction or, or EQ'd some noises out, again, you can find that video somewhere. But uh, let's take a listen to this. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am. That's beautiful. Really reflects who I am as a person. Now she sounds a lot fuller at the end, a lot more similar to her in the beginning. Century modern, a little bit art deco, reflects who I am as a person. Yes, it sounds like the same level. She, she does sound like she's pulling back, like ending her sentence, but it sounds like the same level, uh, the same amount of power that I'm getting <laughs> into my ear canal. My thing, I feel like it's a great depiction, reflects who I am as a person. Oh yeah. Art deco. Beautiful, awesome. We could bring this threshold maybe down just a little bit. And I'm really liking that. So furthermore, for the controls here, we have the attack, which this is how fast the compressor compresses. So if you push this all the way back here and it's slow, you know, 13 uh, milliseconds or, or more, then you may not even get that much of an effect because it's taking too long to get to those peaks. Uh, so I like to leave this, um, pretty low. I, I like to be pretty pretty much down here in the maybe 1.5 um, to 5 region, uh, but I usually stay even lower than that. Maybe even, yeah, let's say 1.0 uh, to 5. And then when I show you guys something else, the side chain, I even go lower with that. So let's check this out. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold 
really, really reflects who I am as a person. Nice. That sounds good. It sounds really, really powerful. And the hold would be how long it holds onto the compression before it releases, because you do want it to release. Like once it hits this peak, you want it to stop and let whatever come through, come through. And then if it passes the threshold, then pull it down. You don't want it to come on and stay on. If you did in some certain situation, uh, you can crank this hold and it would kind of hold that for however long that you determine. The release is similar to the hold, but the release is actually like a let go. It kind of slowly leans off. So it, the attack uh, determines how fast it jumps on that, that peak that comes up and then the release determines how fast it lets go. So it could come on that peak slow, like, oh, let's grab that. All right, let's let off. Or it could come on and then, all right, that's good, that's good. All right, jump on that one. All right, all right, get off. You know, when it comes to these ones in the beginning, sorry for all the narration, just trying to, you know. So uh, if we come back here, I like the release to be pretty low. Um, you may have situations where, where you can raise it. Of course, like I said before, you're gonna wanna play around with these things in certain situations to, to try to find the sound you're looking for. Um, and of course you could make all kinds of crazy sounds. So uh, if you're looking for a crazy effect, you may wanna play around with that more. But for me, I usually leave this pretty stinking low. I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a- Okay, I like this. But one thing I'm hearing is some extra frequencies now that were compressed. So don't be afraid to come back to your equalizer if you've been working uh, and ducking some of these frequencies. Um, and I'm actually going to change this two band real fast. I know this is not an equalizer video, but I just wanna get this sound sounding as good as I can at the moment. And again, if you wanna watch that video. Let's say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern. Yeah, just that one frequency. I gotta get that out of there. Little bit art deco. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a- She sounds really smooth now. It's just less, you know, some frequencies and some voices have like a eh, And sometimes you just gotta duck that out a little bit. So um, mm -hmm. moving again, one thing that helps a lot with audio, if you have background noise or if you don't have background noise is just music. And one thing you can use for music really well is side chain compression. So if I just throw this track in here and we come back to Fairlight and take a listen. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I love color. Okay, I can hear what she's saying, but I can't actually hear what she's saying. So um, what we're gonna do is side chain the music to her voice. So with our compressor, uh, we can turn this on and then maybe turn this down a little bit, maybe to exactly where we had our other threshold, maybe a little lower than where we had our other threshold. So let's go to minus 23. Then you can click listen and maybe we'll turn the ratio up a bit to maybe four and the attack all the way down, almost all the way down. And so the side chain will tell this in particular track, listen to this other track. And when it gets to these thresholds, duck yourself. That way you can pull the other track in. And then when that one goes away, you can pull the music back up and then it, they'll, they'll ride each other like that, which is really nice. All you have to do now with the listen set is come back to our audio track one, go to the bus outputs, click this plus sign, go to side chain, and now this compressor from track two knows to listen to track one. And now let's take another listen before, turn off the compressor. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid you can hear. Modern, a little bit art deco. I. But let's turn it on. Love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction. Ooh, we can turn that threshold down a little more. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am as a person. Nice. And we haven't even turned down track two yet. It's still at the same audio level. So let's turn down track two a little bit. And listen to that nice uh, ride we have. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I love color. 
color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am as a person. That's pretty sweet, y'all. That's pretty stinking sweet. Um, let me bring the threshold up a little bit and then I'll bring our ratio up pretty high. Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Now I can turn the whole track up. Mid-century modern, a little bit art deco. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am as a person. Now, another thing I would do, because this sounds great, and if you guys have wondered how, you know, how do the TV shows get that nice, full sound with the music and the voice, I can still hear what they're saying. That That's awesome. And now we've really created a nice full spectrum in the entire EQ band, um, if you know what that means. So uh, now what, one thing I would actually do is kind of cut some of the frequencies out of this um, music track just to give a little bit more space because right now we have frequencies from the music that are doing the same thing uh, well, we have frequencies in the same place as we have frequencies as the vocals. And we need to get those frequencies kind of out of there a little bit. So um, generically, uh, or generally, generally a female voice is going to be in this higher mid-high to high range. So I'll take our three band and pull this down a little bit. And this is the inspector for the audio music track. And then I'll change our band two to a bell curve. And then pull this down in those mids, mid-highs. And then now if we listen... Um, I would say I'm very mid-century modern. Mid-century modern. Now we can bring the music up some deco. more. I love color. Color is like my thing. I feel like it's a great depiction of my personality. Anything bright and bold really, really reflects who I am as a person. And you know what the side chain's also nice for? When you have like a video where there's music sometimes, like a documentary, where let's say there's there's music and then there's somebody speaking and then they stop speaking and the music continues. That's a really quick way of making sure that the music just, just dips down a little bit every time somebody talks because you may have some talking and then some B-roll and some talking and some B-roll. And that's a really nice way to make sure that everything's full throughout the entire time. And I hope you guys learned something in this video because I'm losing my voice. I've been working hard out here, but I'm pushing it for the channel. And if you guys learned something in this video, please go down there and click that like button. Think about it. Maybe just think about it. You don't have to click it this time. Maybe click it next time, but this time, just think about it. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. I try to always reply. And feel free to subscribe if you like videos on Vinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel. This has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see you all next time. Peace.